I think it's time to talk about D&D races and what character class you should play. Well, the last one we did was Volo from Volo's Guides to Monsters. Do you want to jump back into the player's handbook? We just did all the goblinoids, so why not go to their big cousins and we talk about half-orcs and orcs. D&D half-orc, what character class should you play it is then, Ted? Welcome to Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, I'm Nerdarchist Dave, and as usual, I'm hanging out with this nerd, Nerdarchist Ted. Hey, maybe this is your first time visiting Ted's basement. It's a place where we like to discuss news, views, and homebrews for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Sometimes we'd like to talk about other role-playing games, too. So if you don't want to miss a single video, don't forget to crit hit that subscribe button and attune to that notification bell. Back into our what character class should you play for this race? And this race, we're going to talk about half orcs as well as, as orcs. So I think this one is a, is a little bit more cut and dry uh, than some of our others. But we got we to gotta go through the motions. We got to go through the, the deals and find out what it is that we get from being a half orc. All right. Half orc, you're going to get a plus two to strength and a plus one to con. And they also get a bunch of other great abilities as well. So they're going to get Dark Vision, they're going to get Menacing, which is that uh, proficiency with Intimidation, and they're going to get Relentless Endurance, which you know, we know is that ability to take a hit that would drop you down to zero, place it with one. Don't forget Savage Attack. When they crit, they get to do an extra uh, weapon die of damage, which, which is awesome. They're also going to speak Common and Half-Orc as their languages. Strength and Con, that seems martial class to me. Screams martial classes for sure. Any of them will do. Barbarian, Ranger, Fighter, Paladin. They're going to be good at all of those. Paladin's a little rougher because of that charisma, but you get the strength and con, which Paladins are Malik combatants for the most part. Well, we do have that, you know, that iconic picture of the half-orc Paladin. We do. Uh, uh, Chris Seaman, I believe, drew that, did a great job with it. But, you know, we also want to look at, you know, what is the unexpected character classes. And I think this is where we have uh, a little bit more room to have some conversation and figure out what's going to be super awesome for them. Yeah, absolutely. For, you know, for your half work, I'm really liking Cleric, either Tempest or War. Uh, they're both very martial as far as clerics go. Maybe you focus on, I'm not that kind of cleric when it comes to healing with your half work. Well, the War Cleric uh, specifically, it is a lot of fun to play. Over the editions, I've I've played those those more martial clerics. You know, cleric being my, one of my favorite classes, and getting that bonus to strength and con, using your spells to augment your combat abilities, and not really focus on healing. You're you're gonna you know forget about your attack spells, forget about anything that's gonna require a saving throw. You use it to make you better at combat, and maybe every once in a while you drop a heal spell, you won't need those high wisdoms, and therefore you really don't care about not getting a bonus to wisdom. I don't know if you don't care, but you're just going to have a less of a bonus, but you could still make an effective character with that, and it would probably be a lot of fun to play. Also, we're going to look at Monk and Rogue as well. All right, obviously, if you're looking at Monk, you're looking at going a far more strength-based monk with this uh, this build? Yeah, probably going to be a grappler. I, you know, it's just the fact that you get those other abilities, the Savage Attacker, as well as Relentless Endurance, that's just going to be ma make you a tough fighter all the way around. No one's going to cry over that high con. Now, you're going to probably, you're going to be lacking an armor class because you're not going to have the Dex and Wisdom. So you, your best defense is going to have to be a good offense. And, you know, with, with Rogue, I mean, you could still put, you know, a, a good score in your decks and be okay at it. Just you're not going to be ideal. And, you know, there's nothing nothing wrong with being able to use your strength and be a melee-based Rogue. But you can still go into melee, use your strength, as long as it, you know, meets the other requirements for the weapon. You can get your sneak attack on it. So it would definitely work. And half work definitely fits that role when you're talking about playing, like, that thug-type Rogue. All right, so before we get into orcs, you know, do you know where else you might be able to find some orcs, Dave? No, Ted, where is that? Over on the Nerdarchy merch store. We've got all kinds of nerdy swag over there. Coffee mugs, baseball caps. We even have an orc plushy t-shirt you can buy over on the Nerdarchy merch store. So go check out the link in the description below. And you can stay nerdy all the time. All right, so we got half orc covered. What are, what are we looking at when it comes to orcs? Orcs are very similar to half-orc, except for they get a penalty to their stats. They get a plus two to strength, 
They get a plus one to con, but they also get a minus to intelligence. So they're going to walk away with that same dark vision and menacing ability that their their half-bred cousins have, but they're going to have some other abilities as well. Yeah, they get aggressive, which is, as long as they're moving towards an enemy, they can use a bonus action to basically dash, and they're also going to get powerful build. So they, they're better at carrying gear and stuff around than the half-orc. And of course, they're going to they're gonna have the same language options of common and orc. So the biggest problem with the orc is, while their abilities aren't terrible, they're just not as good as what the half work gets. Powerful build, I don't know how, how much that's gonna come up. If you wanna build that power lifter character and be a bear totem a barbarian and really stack it on, sure, that, that's great, but the game, mechanics of the game really don't reward you for that at all. Their aggressive ability is decent, but I don't know that it's as good as Savage Attack or as good as Relentless Endurance. Now, I will say you're more likely to be able to use it more often. And with that, I ask the question is, does it compensate for, you know, getting the, the minus two to intelligence? I mean, if you're not playing a character that cares about intelligence, I mean, you could be like, all right, screw it. I dump intelligence. I'm a six. I'm barely smarter, you know, than, than those smart animals that are out there. But you know what? I'm powerful. I'm awesome. I can go do these other things. I, you know, let me know in the comments. Why would you choose to play an orc over a half orc? Well, you know what that six intelligence does for you? That puts you on even keel with the paladin's mount. <laughs> or maybe you are a paladin and you and your mount are like this. You guys, you guys are seeing eye to eye because you have both have that six intelligence. Man, man, talk about the conversations that are happening there. I mean, I almost wish, I almost wish it could be even lower. So this way, the the steed could be the brains of the operation. That would be fantastic. Our character class choices are going to very look very similar to what we chose for the half work. So plus two to strength, plus one to con. Ignore that intelligence. You're looking at martial classes, so you're still looking at your your fighter, your barbarian, your paladin, and your ranger. And for our unexpected, we're actually going to go with basically the same ones as well. Although I will say that aggressive ability pairs with Monk and Rogue a lot better than the half-work abilities do in a sense that you're going to be more mobile on the battlefield. You can get in there, you can hit things. I, I would have to say that, you know, the same is going to hold true with the Barbarian. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any, it's always going to be useful, especially if you're playing a melee combatant. If you want to get in there and attack first and... How many times is it you fall short and that extra 30 feet of movement is a big deal. Uh, and it can be even more with, you know, the monk class or the barbarian class, which both get, you know, um, improved movement uh, speeds. So, you know, for unexpected, we are looking at the monk, the, the rogue and the cleric for, you know, the, the same reasons as the half orc, as, as Dave says, you know, that, that aggressive is going to come up more often uh, then, you know, some of the half orcs abilities, but it's up to you as to, you know, whether you'd rather go with orc over half orc. Right. And, you know, don't forget that extra bonus feature of possibly being just as smart as the paladin steed. But let us know down in the comments below. What do you think? Would you play the orc over the half orc? Do you have a preference? But before you do that, before you go, let me take a moment to invite you, my friends, to Nerdarchy the Adventuring Party over on Patreon. Ted, you want to tell them what they can expect over there? We're creating products every month for both players and DMs alike for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, and you can be able to use these and drop them right into your game. That's not all. Also, we're doing monthly giveaways here at Nerdarchy. Our patrons get entered automatically. And every week we're also doing hangouts with our patrons and more. Quest down to the description. Join the Nerdarchy Adventuring Party, and until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.